Good morning and welcome to Pitlochry Baptist Church. My name is David Barry, I'm the pastor of the church and today is Remembrance Sunday and I would ask you if you are able to stand with me as we observe a moment's silence. We do this as a sign of respect for those who have paid ultimately with their lives for the freedom that we enjoy and to remember those who have suffered and who continue to suffer as a consequence of war. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. And now I'm going to hand over to Eden, to Miranda and to Luca, who are our hosts and who are going to lead us in our worship time together.
But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. In 1914, a group of idealists who were part of a terrorist organisation called the Black Hand Brigade didn't like the political status quo of the day. So they decided that they were going to take matters into their own hands by acts of violence. And on the 28th of June, 1914, one of them threw a hand grenade into a car and by do, so doing killed the Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife. This single act of violence started a massive chain reaction that led to Austria declaring war on Serbia and within one month, World War I was to begin. And then during World War I, there was two million Russian uh, soldiers killed, two million German soldiers killed, there was 900,000 British, 1.4 million French, 50,000 American soldiers and countless other millions of casualties, men, women and children. In 1939, another idealist wanted to change the status quo. And he wanted to do this by a single act of violence. So he invaded Poland. And that idealist name was Adolf Hitler. And by that single act of violence, so began World War II in 1939. And during that war, 61 countries were involved. And at its peak, something in the region of three quarter of the world's population were involved. 50 million people died. 
countless others maimed or injured, all because of single acts of violence. Lives and generations lost forever just because of two men who wanted to change the status quo and not do it peacefully. There's something quite beautiful about how different we are as human beings. In Genesis, and Jesus refers to this, it says that God made us in his image, male and female, and he went on to say that it was very good. You and I are very good as being created. But all too often we think of our fellow human beings or our neighbours as others. They're not like us. They speak different. They look funny. Their views and their ideas, well, they're just not right. Their food's a wee bit spicy or their food's still moving when they're eating it. And look at just their clothes. You and I maybe wouldn't be seen dead in those clothes because they're not like us. They're different. They are others. It's them and us. But how did Jesus speak into this? How did Jesus head off any potential conflict with others? Well, in the passage that was read to us in Luke, Jesus commands this to his followers. Do to others as you would have them do to you. And this command comes from a much larger section dealing with love and dealing with the subject of loving and judging others. The others that Jesus is specifically speaking of here are not so much those people who are like us, those people who we go on with well and see eye to eye. Jesus is speaking of those who we may or they may consider us as enemies. Those who want to do us harm. And Jesus says we are to do good to them and not harm. Even if they loathe us and they mock us and they curse us and they don't like us by the standards or the values that we live by. They may see the world a whole lot different from us. And because of that, there is conflict. And it's them and it's us. Now we've largely grown up in a democratic society. The others that Jesus may be referring to may not be open to such a free and fair society. They may not believe in our human rights or our human values or our human freedoms. And these others may be actively pursuing to remove them, to stand against them. And we don't need to go far to see or to experience the pain and the suffering that is caused by others like that. Therefore, as disciples of Jesus Christ, how are we to respond today? And the relationships with others, the people next door, the people who are in the next screen to us in the church Zoom feed, the people who live under the same roof as us, how are we to respond as disciples, obedient disciples of Jesus Christ? I offer just a few brief thoughts in one story. The first thing that comes to mind is we need to be willing to treat others the way that we desire them to treat us. First and foremost, as followers of Jesus Christ, we need to be willing to forgive. It may be difficult to forget, but we need to forgive to move on in the situation that is holding us back. I tell you the truth, I know one man who absolutely detests Germans, all because of World War II and World War I. It would be unbelievably rude if a German person was speaking to them. And this person was born in the 1960s. There are as many cruel Russians, Germans, Americans or Brits as there are other nationalities. And Jesus commands us to forgive, even a whole nation forgive, but more closer to home, we're to forgive a neighbor, a family member, a brother and sister in Christ who has caused us pain and who has caused us sorrow. And that pain is very real, it's very sore, it really does hurt. Later in this section, Jesus teaches 
and he teaches cr with clarity. It's crystal clear. He goes on to say, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. This wasn't a high ideal, something that was unattainable, something to just try and get to, but you would never, ever reach. Remember the words that Jesus spoke on the cross just after he'd been hung there and the nails were piercing his, his flesh and his skin. And he says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. If we don't commit if we don't commit to the act of forgiving others, we'll find that we get stuck. Surely if Jesus indwells us, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and therefore surely we can call in his strength to help us become unstuck, to deal with the pain and the unjust situations that are in our past or our present. Surely we can move on otherwise Will just remain stuck and not grow in the ways of the Lord. Because unforgiveness is corrosive. Not so much for the other person, but for the unforgiving one. Unforgiveness remains with us in our relationships. If we've had bad ones in the past and we've not learned, we've not learned to forgive and move on, we will undoubtedly have them in the present and in the future. Be unstuck, forgive. The truth is, we're often moved to help others who have suffered because of, say, a natural disaster like the, the tsunami in, uh, in, uh, off the coast of Japan about nine or ten years ago. And, and as a nation, we respond very easily and, and rightly to children in need and to, uh, to comic relief. But we're also commanded to respond when it is not emotional, when our heartstrings are not being pulled. We, as followers of Jesus Christ, have been commanded to reach out and to love those where it's unemotional, such as those who are prisoners, such as those who are prostitutes or addicts, the homeless, the elderly, the sick, and those who struggle from mental health issues. And it's it's just really difficult. We're called to help those who at times won't even allow us to draw near to them. There is no emotional contact. So we need to be willing to care, willing to love these others when in so many ways they are just not like us. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12, verse 5, no, verse 15, he says this, Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn, whether they are like us or not. And there is a challenge where we can have peaceful homes, workplaces, churches. This would be a reality if we were and it's for you and it's for me as well, if we would be willing to step forward in the act of forgiveness when so much wrong has been done to us. And here is a story I'd like to finish with. And this is from the late Ravi Zacharias and he tells an event that happened uh, prior to him going to speak to an Islamic university in Malawi. The Islamic apologist Ahmed uh, Didat had come to speak and had strongly it attacked the Christian worldview. He'd done it with, with such force. And the majority, the minority of Christians who were in the audience were deeply, deeply offended. And during the question and answer section of uh, this talk by Didad, a professor of geology, a professor Lee, put his hand up to ask a question. Why are you attacking what I believe and why do you call it inconsistent and unbelievable? Didad called the professor out and asked him to come up onto the stage. And the professor, who taught at the View University, left his seat and joined Didad on the stage. 
Didad invited Professor Lee to, to come a bit closer to him. And Didad and, and Lee did just that. And, and Didad says, no, come closer. And Professor Lee stepped closer. And at that moment, Didag took his right hand and gave Professor Lee one hen heavy-handed slap on the face in front of everyone. Professor Lee, who was a slight man, took the full force of the blow and his face was, was burning up and his whole body shook with the trauma of what had just taken place. It shocked him deeply. And it was at that point that Deep Dad says, now turn the other cheek. Isn't that what your faith demands? Professor Lee uh, says something to the effect that he didn't know if he could handle the situation. And in that very moment, he prayed that God would give him the strength. And at this, Professor Lee did just that. He turned the other cheek to Deep Dad. At that moment, Many in the crowd hissed. Didad said, all right, I'll sort this out quickly and, 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 and surely. Give me your shirt. So Professor Lee unbuttoned his shirt and gave it over. And Didad says, you're supposed to give me your trousers as well. Professor Lee, at this point, knew the significance of what was happening and he turned to the audience and this is what he said to the audience my students please forgive me for doing this but my faith in Christ is real and I'm going to show this man it's real and it's not fake and he unbelted his trousers gave them over and he stood there in his underwear with his face burning in pain he turned round and he went back to his office. Before too long, there was a line of students outside his door, tap, 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 tapping. Many of them were Islamic students, some of them on bended knees, asking the professor's forgiveness for what had just taken place. What a difference you and I can make in this world today by what we do to others. By following the way of Jesus. Maybe it's difficult to forgive, but as we follow in his footsteps, we know as we have been forgiven, we can forgive and move on in the ways of the Lord. May it be so for you and may it be so for me. And would you join me as I just pray for the briefest of moments? Dear Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And I especially think of those who are, are offended at this talk, at the idea of forgiving when so much wrong has been done to them. Lord, would you reach down from on high? Lord, would you rescue Lord, would you do a healing that is deep within their soul and their memories and even their body, that they would be able to take a step forward in obedience to Jesus and the strength of the Holy Spirit to forgive as Jesus has forgiven. And that, Lord, they would see chains drop off of their shoulders, that they would become unstuck and move on in the way of the Lord. Help us, Father, to forgive as we have been forgiven. And may we know forgiveness in Jesus. May we know the truth that our sins are removed as far as the east is from the west. May we know a right relationship with you. And by the Spirit cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy, Papa. And may you continue to do a good work in our lives for your glory and in the name of Christ Jesus. And by your Spirit I pray. Amen. God bless.
Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Lord, I pray this week that we would know your leading, your power, your presence, your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, that you never leave or forsake us. Thank you for joining us and bless you all this week.